It doesn't matter where you live in the world, everyone loves a good animated movie. But sometimes jokes get lost in translation. Tons of movies get altered to relate to their worldwide audiences. Watch until the very end to find out which Disney movie's title was changed due to being inappropriate in another country. I loved you in Fairy Dream Adventure Part 7. Okay, bye. I love you. The Incredibles you might remember Mr. Incredible's arch enemy from the beginning of The Incredibles. He was a French speaking thief named Bomb Voyage. Bomb Voyage. Ah. Incroyable. He crashes through a brick wall to steal his latest target. His weapon of choice is, you guessed it, bombs. And he keeps getting away. It's the failed attempt to capture him that makes Mr. Incredible get a bunch of bad press. Bomb Voyage's name is a play on the phrase Bon Voyage, which means good journey in French. It's something you might say to someone before they go on a trip. It's pretty funny because he uses bombs and always gets away. You would think they would keep the name the same in France, right? Wrong. In France, Bomb Voyage's name was changed to Full Amour. It means something like crazy love in English. The French version also doesn't translate a lot of the stuff he says in the subtitles. Only a few phrases show up. He says, Mr. Incredible, Little O, and your outfit is totally ridiculous. Je travaille en solo. Et tenue est complètement ridicule. Attends, attends, attends. We're definitely glad they chose to keep this hilarious line. It's one of the funniest ones the villain has to offer. Edna Mode would be so mad if she heard him. Bomb Voyage, uh, oops. We mean Full Amour is voiced by Patrick Osmond. He's a super famous French voice actor who dubbed Michael Keaton's lines in the 1989 Batman movie. Zootopia. Zootopia came out in 2016 and it was an overnight success. This movie was all about a perfect world where talking animals live together in peace. Predators and prey got along just fine. Well, mostly. There was a lot of discrimination between predators and prey. The message in the movie about accepting everyone was amazing. But if you speak about Zootopia to a friend from another country, they might have no idea what you're talking about. Zootopia comes from the word utopia. That means a perfect world. But you might have noticed that Zootopia Zootopia is actually a huge city. Disney filmmakers realize that Zootopia might not market well to other audiences, so in a few countries, the name is Zootropolis. That comes from the word metropolis, which is a much better word to describe the movie's setting. So which countries have this alternative title? You might be surprised. The United Kingdom is one of them, even though they speak English there too. A lot of the Nordic countries like Norway and Finland also call it Zootropolis. So do Italy, Spain, and Albania. France, on the other hand chose to stick with Zootopia. Think that's crazy? Germany for some reason chose to change the title to Zoomania. It's the only country with that name. I'm sorry, sir. I tried to stop her. She's super slippery. Monsters University. When you're translating a movie into another language, things get complicated. And if you have a whole joke based on spelling, it gets even harder. We can't understand her. She's from the other studio. Ah. This is exactly what happened in Monsters University. You remember Randall Boggs, right? In Monsters, Inc., he was the villain. He was trying to create a scream extractor that bordered on a torture device. He hated Mike and Sully so much because they were the best at their job. But in Monsters University, we see a different side to Randall. He was a total outcast who really wanted friends. At the scare games, he tried to make some buddies. He brought cupcakes, which is always a win in our book. The cupcake spelled out, be my pal. Later, the cupcakes get stuffed onto Randall's shirt and the letters combine to spell out lame. Here's why this just wouldn't work in other countries. Pal may be another word for friend in English, but it doesn't always have a translation. In some countries, he would need a lot more letters to say the same basic thing. That's a lot more cupcakes. On top of that, the letters need to form an insult and pulling that off isn't always easy. So for the international versions, the cupcakes go from having smiley faces to sad faces instead. The joke might be way less funny, but it still works. And the rest of the movie is hilarious. Missing out on one joke isn't that big of a deal. Inside Out Pixar got into some seriously deep themes when they released Inside Out. They turned human emotions into characters, and it was amazing. Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What is it, woman? What? But there was a lot of stuff in this movie that had to be changed for other countries. The title was different in other places, and a few scenes were totally changed. But one of the changes had to do with languages. Sometimes Disney and Pixar will change signs and words to fit other languages. Sometimes they leave it in English and just use subtitles. But they had a whole new challenge with Inside Out. Before they go into abstract thought, Bing Bong reads a sign that says danger. His trunk goes from left to right as he points out the letters. D-A-N-G-E-R, shortcut. 
I'll prove it to you. But did you know that not all languages are read from left to right? And some of these are major languages like Arabic, Hebrew, and Farsi. In the countries where they speak these languages, Bing Bong's trunk movements wouldn't make any sense. So animators changed it. His trunk moves from right to left. It's pretty cool that they can make little changes like that. That way everyone understands what's happening. Dolphin? Finding Dory Sometimes movies in other countries are released with subtitles. Other times, voice actors will dub another language over the original. Finding Dory doesn't have too many international changes. No major scenes had to be reanimated, but there is one big difference in a few versions. At the Marine Life Institute, the narrator at the park is Sigourney Weaver. Hello? I'm Sigourney Weaver. Oh. Sigourney. She's a super famous actress known as the sci-fi queen. She's best known for her roles in Alien and Avatar, and she's definitely famous around the world. Even though she's well-known globally, a few countries changed the narrator. France had a well-known news anchor play her part. Mexico had an astronaut voice the role. Pixar wanted to include other celebrities in the film. These are called meta cameos. The actors voice themselves, but they don't actually appear in the film. All we hear are their voices. Even if you heard Ellen's voice as Dory, you might have heard a celebrity from your country in those scenes. We think that's pretty cool. Which celebrity would you have liked to hear as the Marine Life Institute narrator? Up. Up is easily Pixar's most heart-wrenching movie. In the montage of Carl and Ellie's life, we see how much Ellie wanted to go to Paradise Falls. It's a beautiful place in South America, according to the movie, and it has an epic name. Paradise Falls sounds like the perfect place. Throughout the montage, we see them putting money in a jar labeled Paradise Falls. They're trying to save up for the trip as best as they can. But things keep happening, and they have to spend the money. Ellie passes away and never gets to go to Paradise Falls, so Carl decides later in life to retire there. Lots of times, signs and notes are translated into other languages for international purposes, but not in this case. Rather than translate the piece of paper, the animators did something totally different. There's a sketched picture of Paradise Falls on the jar. If you watch this movie outside of the US, you'll just see a drawing that a young Ellie made. We don't know how animators decided what to translate and what to completely replace. These are some pretty subtle changes, but one Disney film's title meant something totally gross in another country. Keep watching to find out which one. Ratatouille Okay, so Up may have replaced words with a picture, but in Ratatouille, things got translated. Ratatouille? They must be joking. Ratatouille is all about a rat named Remy. He loves to cook. He's the most passionate chef we've ever seen. Seriously, he needs his own show on the Food Network. He wants nothing more than to be a famous chef and make delicious food for people. But he's a rodent. He befriends a cook named Linguini, who isn't that great in the kitchen. Linguini works at a famous restaurant that's been receiving poor reviews from critics. Remy and Linguini work together to make new, exciting food. France is known for being the food capital of the world. So easy to find good food in Paris. French people love food, and they're good at making it. It was the perfect place to set the film, but everyone in the movie speaks English. It was translated into French, but it wasn't just the voice tracks that changed. The letter Remy finds and reads was translated to French too. Not every country translated the text because Remy does proceed to read it out loud, but since it took place in France, they changed the handwriting to honor the culinary capital. Inside Out Inside Out might have made more changes for international audiences than any other Pixar film, but one of the coolest changes is the title. Inside Out makes total sense to English speakers. It lets us know that things are happening inside of Riley. It also tells us that emotions are the main characters instead of the people. It's a pretty clever title, but that phrase doesn't translate well into other languages, and some places have very different but equally awesome titles. In Denmark, the movie is called Deep Inside. That sounds like it could be a horror movie. In Germany, it's called Everything is Upside Down. That also translates as Everything is Wild. If you live in Brazil or Portugal, you might know the movie as Fun Mind. Saudi Arabian speakers know it as Heart and Mind. The Russian title translates to Headbreaker or Jigsaw. China and Taiwan have three different titles, but keep in mind that these are direct translations. There's The Great Team Inside Head, Turning Inside Head, and Play With Friend of Inside. Polish people, on the other hand, call the movie It Doesn't Fit Inside the Head, whereas Mexico calls it Intense Mind. Japan's is pretty obvious, it's just called Inside Head. Who knew there were so many alternate titles to Inside Out? I loved you in Fairy Dream Adventure Part 7. Okay, bye, I love you.
Zootopia. News anchors are pretty important people. No matter where you live in the world, you get to know the faces that bring you your news. News anchors might not be Hollywood famous, but they do become a sort of local celebrity. If you deliver national news, you have one of the most recognizable faces in your country. In Zootopia, they really wanted to get this point across. News anchors are supposed to feel familiar. So this is where Zootopia makes its biggest international change. The scenes with the news anchors looks totally different depending on the country. The animators replaced one anchor with the most recognizable, familiar animal for each location. USA, Canada, and France all had a moose anchor, but those are weird animals to kids in China. They got a panda journalist instead. Australia and New Zealand got a koala, and Japan got something equally adorable. They had a tanuki. Brazil replaced the news anchor with a jaguar. The best part is that in some countries, these characters were voiced by actual journalists. That's so awesome! Coco Coco is all about family and following your dreams. The beautiful animation of this Mexican-inspired movie still gives us goosebumps. The story follows Miguel, who wants to play music, but his family has banned it for generations. He ends up in the afterlife on the night of Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. There, he discovers the truth about his family's dark past. The movie is named after Miguel's great-grandmother. Her name is Socorro, but she goes by Coco. She's very old and doesn't have a great memory, but she is the last person who remembers her father. If she forgets and the family doesn't honor him, he'll disappear from the afterlife forever. But Coco means something totally different in Portuguese. It basically means something very gross that you do in the bathroom. Ew. So in Brazil, they had to change the title. No one wants to see a movie named after number two. They call it Viva, Life is a Party. And since you can't call your grandma a bathroom name, Coco's name is changed to Inez in that version. We're so glad they caught that translation error before they released it. What's your most favorite Pixar movie ever? Tell us in the comments. Give this video a big thumbs up if you love animated movies, and make sure to subscribe to The Things for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching! We'll see you next time!